Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit. Yes, it's exactly 6.05 a.m., not even at or about, just exactly. It is Tuesday, May the 17th, 2022. Hope you had a restful night of sleep and are getting ready for a great day. This morning, we find ourselves, as we seldom do, in the book of Ecclesiastes, at chapter 10, verse 10, uh, something I grew up with in the way of an axiom, no pun intended, maybe a little bit, uh, in our home. And uh, the title of this morning's Breakfast Biscuit, as you're finding Ecclesiastes, is There's Something You Need to Do, and uh, in parentheses, <clears throat> How's Your Axe? So, oddly enough, the uh, wonders of the internet, the internet can be a big bane to us because of some of the things we can get into if we don't watch it, but the internet can also be a great blessing. And oddly enough, when I went to search for the reference for this scripture verse that I got memorized, I can't ever remember the reference, uh, I found this article from the Selma, Alabama Times at Sentinel, dated Monday, September the 24th, 2012. That'll be the, the story that we're going to hear this morning. Uh, but the book tells us in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10, if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, <clears throat> more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. Now, that's good. That's a modern English translation but I don't think it captures the essence of the verse. King James, although it is a little stilted, translates that last phrase in a far more meaningful way to us to help us understand what's going on. So in verse 10 in King James, if the iron, meaning the axe head, be blunt and he do not wet the edge, sharpen it, <clears throat> then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. That means a lot more to us, and I think it, it uh, projects the meaning of the scripture better than, but skill will bring success. Skill won't bring success in this case, and more accurately translated, wisdom is profitable to direct. What does that mean? Sometimes you got to take a minute, stop what you're doing when you're becoming less and less productive, and sharpen your axe. So here comes the story from the Alabama uh, sen Selma, Alabama, Sentinel Times, from September of 2012, illustrating this point. Said a young man was hired to work with a logging company, and he was very strong and quite efficient. He, he and his axe worked as one. They were inseparable. To see one was to see the other, and using his axe, the young man could cut more trees than any other worker. One day, he met a much older logger. The old man would cut a few trees, then stop to sharpen or adjust his axe. This occurred several times a day, but the young man couldn't make so much sense of the old man's time-consuming routine. He simply decided to keep cutting, which meant that he surpassed the old man on a daily basis. After several days, however, the young man's production was quite low, and as a result, he lost his job. He could not understand how the old man could stop and rest and adjust his axe and still beat him in production. As he gathered his belongings to leave the job site, he approached the old man and said, I just don't understand. I outworked you. When you rested, I continued cutting, yet you outproduced me. How can this be? <clears throat> the old man said, I learned a lesson many years ago from the Bible. Ecclesiastes 10.10 states, a dull axe requires more strength. Be wise and sharpen your blade. The old man said, I was not resting. I stopped to sharpen the edge of my axe and adjust my handle. He went on to explain that because the young man never stopped to sharpen his edge, he labored more and accomplished less. That's true in all of life. In life, <clears throat> for me and for you, we can't just throw the ax away because it got dull. There are trees that still need to be cut down and structures that need to be built, and we have to first accept the fact that sometimes losing our cutting edge is a part of life, but we can't dwell on our past failures. When we lose our cutting edge, we must get up and begin sharpening our axe again. All this from the <laughs> Selma, Alabama Sentinel Times. We must recognize it when we get dull, and if we're going to regain our edge, we can't live in denial, but neither do we want to settle on being dull. Instead, aim to stay sharpened. Laziness isn't always to blame when a cutting edge is lost. In fact, the young man in this story was not lazy. He was still working, but his work became less effective because he took no time to preserve his axe. Oftentimes, our axe's blade becomes dull just from the work itself. Sometimes we assume that being busy means that we're accomplishing a lot. 
However, in reality, we can save time and accomplish a whole lot more by taking the necessary time to sharpen our tools. So, let's remember that although we may have lost our cutting edge, we must take the time for maintenance to get it back. Stop and take a break to readjust, regroup, <clears throat> and sharpen yourself. You know, this principle gets pointed out time and time again in Scripture. It's very, very similar to what's stated to us in the book of Proverbs when it says, where there is no ox, the manger is clean. What does that mean? Where there is no ox, you don't have to go in and shovel out the stall in the barn every day from what the ox does while he's in there. But the verse goes on to say, where there is no ox, the manger is clean, but from the strength of the ox comes an abundant harvest. So, I think I told you one other time back in the day, uh, in the margin of my Bible, some old preacher said one time in a message, and I jotted it down in the margin of my Bible, no milk without manure. All of us <laughs> generate some byproducts that aren't that desirable, but they, we bring the strength uh, to the harvest, which is important. Everything that's really good has got some maintenance, got some drawback, got some downside to it. And in our lives, we can't just go, 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 go because we'll become unproductive after a while. That's the reason the good Lord gives us one day off a week, every week, and we suffer if we don't take it. It's also the time that we have to remember what Rick Warren said. He said, divert daily, withdraw weekly, abandon annually. Summertime's coming up. It's going to be a time where everybody generally takes a little breather. Use that breather time to sharpen your axe to serve the Lord with more strength, more power, and more effectiveness. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for our salvation with a righteousness apart from the law. And thank you for deliverance from besetting sins. Father, we thank you that the scripture tells us things even like the fact that we need to turn aside from time to time and rest and sharpen our acts so that we'll be more effective in the day-to-day. -day. God, I pray that we would recognize that we have to not just be busy all the time, but to make sure that our equipment, our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirits are in order. God, help us to do that today and help us to uh, swing our axes more effectively for you. God, I pray your blessing on these, your people, and let us be uh, your hands and your feet today, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you, I'm praying for you, and I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.